Good morning and happy Tuesday. You are looking live over a very foggy start to the day in Dublin right now. The time is 630 on this January 3rd. I'm Caitlin Heck and I'm Wanye Reese. This Tuesday morning, it's looking good on you, Central Georgia. Also looking very foggy. Yeah, so make sure you pack your patience as you're heading into work today, Alex, because we're really seeing it all across Central Georgia. That's right, Wanye. I can't tell how you know how it's looking because I can't see anything out here <laughs> in Dublin this morning. And if I punch up the Macon Sky Cam, you know, we have that like one stoplight down at the bottom of the screen. That is all you can see there because uh, it is very foggy out there to say the least. So yeah, looking live in Lawrence County, we do have visibility down below a mile in several locations, but not everywhere though. We're still okay in Sandersville, Cordial, Americas, not so much in Macon, Warner Robins or in Dublin. Milledgeville getting in on the action as well. Overcast skies across a large part of the area, 50s and 60s out there this morning. That's usually what we should be for a high temperature, but severe weather from Kentucky down through Louisiana this morning. A tornado watch in effect. I see a tornado warning just uh, north of the Kentucky state line there. So going to watch that through the afternoon hours as that front slides towards central Georgia. Meanwhile, today temperatures into the 70s, 72 or so by about 2 p.m. A high temperature is 73. A cloudy early this morning. Strong storms later on this evening, a level three severe weather day for parts of Mississippi, Alabama and down into Louisiana for us tomorrow. That becomes a level two. We'll be talking a lot more about this, including a look at future view here in just a few moments. Thank you, Alex. We'll check in with you soon. Right now, the Dublin PA is working to make sure veterans have access to the care that they need especially those who may have been exposed to toxic chemicals during their service. Uh, the promise to address Comprehensive Toxics Act, also known as the PACT Act, applies to veterans from Vietnam and Gulf Wars or post 9-11 conflicts. Our morning reporter TJ Anthony breaks down how you can better understand those benefits. Good morning, TJ. Good morning. That's right. Right now, the medical director at the Dublin VA says he wants veterans impacted by toxic chemicals to file a claim. He's saying that there's more than 20 new presumptive conditions for burn pits and other toxic exposures like Agent Orange and radiation as well. Really getting our veterans to some sort of uh, clarity on where they fall within their eligibilities. Now the director says 4,500 veterans got their toxic screening and the VA hopes to see that number actually grow. Jerry Hamilton served in the Army at Fort McClelland during the 70s and the 80s. Their toxic chemicals such as Agent Orange were made. Hamilton says for the past 40 years, he's had a severe skin rash that doctors can't even identify. I developed respiratory problems, almost died with blood clots and respiratory problems from this. I have asthma, and so I have severe problems breathing all from these chemicals. The director added a number of veterans that potentially qualify under the PACT Act don't use VA benefits, and he wants to see that change. Caitlin and Wani, back to you all. Well, thank you so much, TJ, for that. If you'd like to learn more about benefits you could be eligible for, you can check out the story on our website. That's at 13WMAZ.com. Time's now 633. The Dublin VA is also one step closer to meeting the goal of helping veterans improve their quality of life. That's all thanks to the VA breaking ground on a $16 million historic housing development. There will be 50 apartments, including one building with 22 studios, another with 22 one bedroom apartments and more units. Back in 1945, the Carl Vincent VA started out as a Navy hospital. The two buildings currently being renovated were used for mental health residential treatment and will now be getting new life. It serves three purposes, not just homeless veterans are eligible for a veteran that's near homelessness can be eligible and disabled veterans are eligible for these even arrangement as well. Construction should be complete this October and the VA hopes people can start moving in January and February of 2024. Well, new laws are going to be coming to effect for people who live in Macon Bibb County. Right now, commercial vehicles and trailers are not allowed to be parked in front of your home. Make it bit planning and zoning says vehicles over 10,000 pounds can't sit on your front lawn or in public parking lots. This could include trailers for boating, camping and hauling. Planning and zoning says they will begin to hand out citations and fines, and it's up to a judge to decide how high that fine will be. Well, 634 in your state news. Georgia lawmakers meet again under the Gold Dome next week, kicking off the 2023 legislative session. We talked to central Georgia leaders from both the Republican and Democratic Party to learn what they expect to see. Representative James Beverly, House Minority Leader, says a top issue for Democrats will be health care. As for Republicans, Senator John Kennedy, Senate Pro Tem, says Georgia's business and education will be top. When we talked to him in mid-December, he said the GOP is still working out their priorities with several new leaders, from the Speaker of the House to Lieutenant Governor. Extending health care benefits to all Georgians, that's going to be our number one priority for sure. Uh, we've been fighting that battle for you know, 10 years or so, 
uh, and we're just going to continue. With new leadership will come uh, different sometimes, but new focal points and new focus areas uh, for us moving forward. Uh, the session begins next Monday, January 9th. A recently elected state House Republican now stepping down ahead of a possible suspension. Investigators believe Danny Rampey stole prescription narcotics at the retirement complex he manages. Officers arrested him last month. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution says a special election will happen on the 31st of this month to fill his seat. The special election is for Republicans only since Rampey did not have a Democratic challenger. Well, UGA fans will never forget where they were New Year's Eve 2022, one of the most memorable games in school history. The Peach Bowl went against Ohio State, but now ahead of a national championship game against TCU, Governor Kemp's inauguration is getting pushed back. The governor was scheduled to get sworn in for a second term starting at 6 p.m. on Monday. Well, that would have kept state legislators busy close to game time. Georgia Bulldogs and TCU kick off at 730. So the governor's office announced the ceremony has been now pushed back three days. The governor and other state officials will now be sworn in next Thursday, January 12th. That happens at 930 at the Georgia State University Convocation Center. Well, coming up on 13 WMAZ morning. A horrifying collapse on the field. I'm Jared Hill with the latest on the condition of Buffalo Bills player Damar Hamlin, who suffered a mid-game medical emergency requiring CPR during the game. We tell you how you can help at the First Christian Church Warming Center in Warner Robins and hear about the city's goal to open its own 24-7 shelter. The time is now 636 here on your Tuesday morning. I mean, it's hard to believe that we were dealing with crazy cold weather not mm -hmm. too long ago, and now we're preparing for potential severe weather here in central Georgia. You know, it's not one thing or another, it seems to be. And whenever we get 70s in January, you know you got to pay for it. It's somewhere down yeah. the line. Oh, because yeah. it will correct itself. Mother Nature has a funny habit of repeating itself time and time again. Let's take a live look over Dublin this morning. The writing is on the wall, right? We got a lot of moisture in the area. It's warm outside. Now, the reason why we have a lot of moisture is because we have a southerly wind, and all of that is going to give way to strong storms later on this afternoon, or this evening, I should say. A second round tomorrow morning before we finally clear out on Thursday. 50s and 60s on the map this morning. In fact, a few spots are actually above our average high temperature, so we are way above average this morning. Now, the fog is also an issue out there, as we just saw in Dublin. Visibility down to a half mile in Macon, down to a tenth of a mile in Warner Robins, two tenths of a mile in Dublin, and a tenth of a mile in Milledgeville and in Gordon this morning. So allow a few extra minutes on the road if you are headed out early this morning. We are quiet for now. This time tomorrow morning, this picture is not going to be looking the same. What's out to the west this morning is going to continue to slide towards central Georgia. A line of potentially severe storms, a tornado warning up there in Kentucky, a severe thunderstorm warning just outside the Memphis area right now. All of that continuing to slide off to the east here over the next few hours, and that is going to bring a round of storms into central Georgia tonight. So let's map out the details on feature view. Potentially a few showers this afternoon before the leading edge of the storms works its way towards central Georgia, arriving here around 6, 7 o'clock, and then through the overnight hours, just a relentless rainfall to the north. You can see heavy at times. There's 1 a.m. there on into the morning hours here, 7 a.m. Now this is going to be the main line itself beginning to work its way through. So from 7 a.m. to about 12, 1 o'clock, clock this line is going to be working from northwest to southeast. Now, remember that motion northwest to southeast. What I want you to notice here on the wind is that's going to continue to come out of the south. So you get the storms moving this way, a wind coming from the south. That's how you can get that spin up tornado threat. And that's what we're going to be watching for during the morning hours tomorrow. And then on into the 9 a.m. They're coming through making Warner Robins on into the afternoon. The last of the rain will get out of here. We will begin to clear out in central Georgia and any severe weather threat that we would have had will come to an end. Now, by the time we get to Wednesday night and Thursday, notice how this cloud deck builds in back behind us. Would not surprise me to squeeze a few or squeeze a few showers out of that. So for today, we're going to be talking about a level three risk, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. We are on the edge of a level two, mostly in a level one for today. Now, the reason why they're in a level three back off to the west is because of the tornado threat that's out there. Anytime we get these black hash marks in here, that's indicating potentially strong tornadoes out there, EF2+. Plus. But that is out there. That is not for us here in central Georgia. But we do have a level two threat in effect for us by the time we get to tomorrow. And that's going to be most of central Georgia, say from Taylor, Crawford, up to Jones, Baldwin, Hancock areas to the south. So most of central Georgia. And that is for the threat of a brief spin up tornado, the damaging winds, and of course the heavy rainfall, which could be an issue in and of itself. Now, this is the latest run of our in-house graph model. 
potentially several inches of rain, especially the further north and west you get. The National Weather Service does have a flood watch in effect for Jones, Bibb, Peach, Crawford, Monroe, Upson, and Taylor County. That's going to run until Wednesday evening. So watching that as well, along with the severe weather threat. 100% chance of rain tomorrow. 63 by the time we get to Thursday downhill to 55 by the time we get to Friday average high for this time of year is 59. We'll be right at that for Saturday back to 60 on Sunday with a 20% chance of rain, which comes your way on Monday.